and welcome back to the old Cody Woodshop. Today I'm going to show you how to draw with a palm rotor and to fill in with Milliput, which is an epoxy putty. Let's get started. First you get your material and a design. Then we tape this down. So it doesn't move when we're uh, working on it. And we need some carbon paper. So it's the dark shiny side down, slips under there, we'll just get that one up for now. Let's just make a mark there and where is it? There. So we know the paper only goes up to there and we we'll have to move it along. So all you do is putting a bit of pressure on. You could do this this with a pencil, but a pen sort of runs easier over the paper. A pencil, you, if you put in pressure on with a pencil, you can sometimes rip and go through the paper. So I find a pen better, a biro, not a, a fibre. I'm not an artist at, at all, but doing it this way, picking up a, de, um, a design and going over it with the carbon paper, you can, you can draw anything. I know it's cheating, but some of us aren't artists. Remember, you do need a bit of pressure to get through onto the carbon paper. And even then, sometimes it comes out a little bit light. So don't worry about it. You can always go over the areas. Again. As long as you don't move the, the sheet, that is. Because if you remove the sheet and try to get it back on exactly, it doesn't always work. I think that's it there.
think that's it. Let's have a look. Ah, there we go. Now before I take that up completely, hold it in place. Quite catch this end of here. to be using is the hand router, the palm router as they call them. Uh, this is Makita but there are the um, there are others out there. This is this is a cordless um, but there are uh, corded ones. Katsu is very popular at the moment and um, they're, they're all a similar size whether it be battery or, or corded, these palm routers are all very similar size. And um, I'm also using a, uh, a V-cut. Which way do we go? Oh, there we are. I'll stop there to give you a closer closer look of what I've done. Okay.
Well, I think that's it. If you want to closer look at that. Not too shabby. I'm putting a type of epoxy in there. It's it's called millipot. And this is epoxy putty. It comes in a variety of colours. And you get the you get the colour epoxy and you get the hardener. You have to mix the two to make it set. And it's equal amounts. You see the sticks are equal. So however much you cut off one you have to cut off the hardener as well. So let's get I'm just going to use a bit of, at a time, um, I don't know, I don't know I'll use that much. And then I'll just measure the same amount. Do, you mix the two together and you have to keep kneading them for about five minutes they seem quite hard I've had this packet a little while uh, so I don't know if the hardener goes off on it or not. But this is quite hard at the minute, quite stiff to squish. See the colour coming out of my hands. Right, I've been needing that for a few minutes and it's a little bit more pliable. There aren't any streaks or different colours in there, it's all the same colour. So I'll just push it in. Messy job. Somebody's got to do it. Then they say. It seems to pull it out. So, well, I haven't pushed it in properly. Properly, at least I can see what I'm doing.
we've probably already worked out that we're going to have to sand this down. Um, but using a bit there. I found the best method for, for squeezing it in is using a, a scraper, paint scraper or a spreader or whatever. And don't take, cut it underneath and take it off because it just pulls the stuff back out. Is to push down and drag it. It will take off the excess and uh, it will apply, apply pressure to, to the grooves. And there is there's some areas you might you might need to do more than once, but on the whole, that's, it's come out quite well. I think that's done. Now this takes three to four hours to dry, to go hard, and then you can sand it. Well, that's, uh, that's been drying overnight. This is a chunk that was left over. Solid, it's like stone. Because I've never used this before, I, I don't know how it's going to sand. But apparently you can sand it, so um, I'm going to start off with a uh, 180 grit. I didn't want to go too aggressive with the 120 because uh, because of the board, it's only MDF. And um, we'll see how we get on. Helps if I plug it in. They tend to go around a little bit quicker. Well, you saw me sand that in real time, and that didn't take long at all. That's not bad. You can see some of the marks here, that's just a little bit low. Now I could carry on sanding that and take it down to the lowest point. But I'm not going to. For a first go, I'm quite happy with that. It's all a learning curve, and um, if, if you learn fr from my mistakes, then um, that's great. This is what it's all about. So yeah, just be sure that you uh, you fill in correctly. Make sure it's it's right to the top. You could even leave it a bit proud because the sanding works so well. You saw there was a patch here. That was quite high and it still didn't take very long to get down so yeah if you leave it a little bit proud you know that the area is filled right to the top then and just sand it down fantastic really pleased with that okay I'm going to go through the grits so um, that's 180 I'll do a 240 
and 320. I might even go to 400. Although I've done this this router drawing before, I've never I've never used this millipot, and I think it's very effective. So I'll be using that a lot more in the future. Now you can quite clearly see the lighter areas or where it's a little bit lower in the groove but I have a sneaky suspicion that when I seal this, which I'm going to do now you won't see those Now this is MDF and it's it's always tricky to know what to put onto MDF to seal it without it sort of popping and warping and all sorts. Uh, MDF really doesn't like moisture unless you get the moisture resistant but it doesn't like moisture at all. But I find that the uh, cellulose, I know the, uh, the sticker's going a bit funny there but the cellulose sealer sanding sealer, thin down, you'll, you'll notice I use it a lot in my videos, I put it on everything, just like to seal that wood, get a nice foundation and then um, I'll put a wax on the top, and that's, that's basically all I use most of the time um, so let's let's try this. Now the the black is going to come through on this. Look at that, that's popping quite nicely. Not too worried about brush strokes because I'm going to sand this down again. So it's nice, smooth, ready for the wax. Look at that, that's lovely. I'll let that dry and I'll come back to you. That sanding seal is now um, sanded down to 400, 600 sorry, 600 I sanded it down to. Uh, very very smooth and um, I don't think I told you why I put sanding sealer, cellulose sanding sealer on is because it dries very quickly because of the makeup of it and and so the moisture doesn't really um, have that long to take hold and to, to warp the board and so uh, I, I think it's an ideal thing to put on the MDF to seal it anyway so uh, so yeah so I've done that and now I'm going to be putting on micro crystalline um, it doesn't have to be renaissance but micro crystalline wax other companies make it not just these and again I'm not being sponsored by these um, 
so yeah pick up anyone you like and all I'm going to do is put a thin layer of this wax on all over the board after I finish this, this um, video I might even do cut out an oval around the design I don't know yet but we'll see give that a minute now all we need to do with that is buff it up And I wish you could feel that, that is so smooth. Let me just take that off there. I did put some double sided tape down just to stop it moving. And then we have the end result. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, it gives you enough information for you to try it for yourself. Um, and I'll put in the description um, where you can pick up uh, the Milliput. I'll put the Milliput sites on there but uh, you can pick it up from other companies as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.